So far in the rooms that we've created, we actually added gating groups. So let's talk about gating groups a little bit. Before we begin this module, let's talk about what gating groups are. I've been adding gating groups to each of the rooms that we've been working on, but the whole idea of gating groups is to control the way microphones behave in relation to one another. So in other words, we've had the beamforming mic, a handheld, and a lavalier in room A, but we want those mics to work cohesively within, within one another. The whole idea of this is that you can actually go to each individual microphone and change some of the gating settings, like the gate ratio and things like that. I can also change the ambient tracking as well as processing things like chairman override, PA adaptive mode. I'm going to talk about all these settings in another module, but this particular module I want to talk about gating groups. And some of these settings can be set here where you want to say within all, this, all those mics to have first mic priority, max number of mics on, last mic priority, as well as number of open mics or NOM. So let's take a look at some of these settings within gating groups. So if you work your way down to the uh, down the list there, you see gating groups. So what I can do, and I'm in room A here, I could actually say in this gating group, I want to add remove mics. And this is where you can add all the mics, uh, whatever ones you want to be in a group. So in this case here, I would just uh, control click, or in this case, I hit the top one and shift uh, the bottom and just highlight them all and hit OK. So now all these mics are in a gating group. Now keep in mind, this is different than channel groups. We talked about this in a previous module where like if I had table mics and I want to maybe have all these mics act the same or I want to change inputs or noise canceling or filters that it would just uh, re reflect to all that whole group. But in this case, I want gating groups. I want all these mics to work cohesively with each other. One feature to help these mics work together is first mic priority. First mic priority is defaulted as on, and the whole idea of this is that you may want to have a handheld here and that when it is voice activated, it will actually gate on, and at the same time will not gate the other mics on, so it keeps the noise floor down. If someone else wanted to speak in the lavalier here, they could speak, and their mic would gate on. But the whole idea of first mic priority is just allows whoever is speaking and their voice activates that mic, it will gate on while leaving the other ones gated off. The maximum number of mics is just basically how many mics do you ever want on at one time. I would probably recommend maybe three or four anyway because if you think about it, if you had eight table mics and they were all gated on with everybody just talking, it gets very confusing for the far end. Uh, so maybe you only have maybe three or four. In this case, you only have three. But the whole idea of this is that it just kind of keeps the confusion down because of uh, too, much, too many mics on at one time, as well as the noise floor will increase as well. You can also say last mic priority. You probably have been on a call where you've actually wondered if the call was still on. I mean, it was so quiet and it's because everybody was taking notes or or went on a break or something. And the whole idea of this is that it's, it's so quiet because all the mics are gated off. But you could actually assign the last one to be stay gated on or you can actually assign one. So in this case I could say I want the beam forming mic to actually be a last mic priority. So no matter what the other mics could be actually be gated off the beamforming mic would stay gated on. So by default it is off, but you can adjust that if you want to. NOM or number of open mics basically maintains a constant or level output to all the mics in the gating group so that the far end audio level doesn't vary as more mics are gated on. So the whole idea of this is if someone were speaking with a handheld mic, and then I doubled the power, or in other words, someone else were speaking on a lavalier, that goes up 3 dB. The far end is not going to hear that increase in audio. It's just going to be a, uh, it's going to maintain a level output to the far end. And the same is in reverse. So if both of these people are talking and all of a sudden one person stopped talking and it gated off, it's not going to get quieter at the far end. So it will attenuate or gain the mics as, as needed to maintain a constant level to the far end.
So this is how you could do a gating group uh, for uh, room A. I could also create one for room B. And in this case here, uh, remember we had all the table mics. And remember on the dialog 20, I wouldn't really have to use those because that's really just that digital audio. So in this case, what I would do is just highlight the actual handheld and the lavalier. And I just shift and uh, clicked this and I have all those mics and they would now be in a gating group. Maybe I could have it set to four and maybe I could have this lavalier or something or maybe there's a table mic I want to assign as last mic priority. Whatever you want to do, but that's how you could set up for room B. But if you remember, we did a combination of these two rooms and now this is where you could actually set up a gating group as well. But notice in this case, you get everybody. You get all the mics in room A and all the mics in room B. So I could literally go here and I could like control click uh, each individual mic here and uh, work my way down and get everybody in this particular group. Because as I combined the two rooms, I now may have access to all those mics now. So what you can do is create a Getty room per room, but also when you do combine rooms, you can also create another gating group. So again, the whole idea of this is so that they all work cohesively with each other and, they, and it makes it uh, very intelligible for the far end. So that's what gating groups are for.